Before we look at some free agent targets for the Browns, how about this question to start the show? Who will win the college football playoff? Let me know in the comments section below who you got winning at it at all uh, at the end, excuse me, in LA next month in January. Sound off down below. Welcome into the Cleveland Browns Report. I don't know who that guy was before the end show because that was broken English at best. But on today's show, we're going to check out some 2023 free agency targets for the Browns and for this guy right here, Andrew Barry, to open up someone else's checkbook and start writing checks because the Browns, I don't think, are going to be huge players in this upcoming free agency period. But I do think they've got some money to spend and they do need to make some improvements. So, the Browns offseason right now, they are currently slated to only have $3.6 million in cap space. You might see that number and decide, I'm leaving the video because they are not getting anyone. Good time to remind you, the cap is a bit of a myth. Contracts can be restructured, right? Deshaun Watson's money, which is taking up a lot of the cap space right now, can be moved into a signing bonus, right? Can be moved into workouts and stuff like that, which can lower the cap hit. So don't look at 3.6 and say, they can only spend that much. No. Contracts can be restructured. Void years can be added. Players' contracts can be extended to generate more room. It happens every single year. With that being said, here are the Browns' biggest needs in my eyes. I really just wanted to put defensive tackle up five times, but producer Patrick said I had to come up with four more. So, wide receiver, I suppose. Also, defense tackle. Uh, safety is definitely one. Linebacker, just because the Browns don't have a ton of linebackers currently rostered for next year. And then defensive end. Clowney's done in Cleveland. Who's going to replace him? That's definitely a need for the Browns this offseason. I've got five for each of those positions in just a second. But, hey, it is offseason mode pretty much here at the channel. So if you're looking for a Cleveland Browns YouTube channel to kind of keep you up to date on the latest Browns news and rumors this offseason, hit that sub button and subscribe today. Let's start the show off, really, by looking at the biggest need for the Browns, and that is defensive tackles. Here are five free agent defensive tackles in different sort of categories of you got the expensive ones, right? Hargrave, Duran Payne. You got some cheaper ones like Shy Tuttle or Greg Gaines. And you got one that I think is under the radar, uh, Tier Tart. So these are definitely five names to keep an eye on for. One guy I like a lot that's not on the list, but I still would like to discuss him for a second, is Danico Autry. He is not a free agent, so I've sort of broken the only rule of my title for this video. But Danico Autry is one of the most underrated players in the NFL. He's got one year left on his contract. And maybe the Titans, after losing their last seven straight games potentially, decide we're going to be big-time sellers, we're trading Autry, we're tearing it all down. And if that's the case, or if they were to cut Autry because they want to save some money, the Browns should be big-time players. I am a huge fan of Danico Autry, and I would love to see him in Cleveland. If not Autry, what about someone like Deron Payne, right? The 2023 defensive tackles for Cleveland— they're probably going to roll with four again, maybe five. But if it's four, I think one of them is going to be kind of a middle price, right? It's like when you look at Yelp and it's like how many money signs does it have? One, two, three, or four? I bet they go two, which Payne is probably a three, but he might slip down to two. You never know. And if that's the case, I don't think they're going to break the bank and sign the most expensive defensive tackle this offseason. So I got them going to the number two spot. Perry on Winfrey is coming back. A draft pick most likely. It has to be. And then a cheaper free agent, kind of like Taven Bryan this year. Just hopefully it's more like a Malik McDowell or Malik Jackson that's just a little bit better than Taven Bryan. Togi and Jordan Elliott will come into camp, and I don't think they'll make the roster. They just have not played well enough to do so. So those are my kind of projected four defensive tackles for Cleveland next year. A complete revamp of the room outside of one player. Now wide receiver. The wide receiver free agency market this year is god-awful. Remember last year how fun it was? We were talking about Chris Godwin, Allen Robinson. The best name is Juju Smith-Schuster. That's really about it. Jacoby Myers, Paris Campbell, Zacchaeus from Atlanta. Miko Hardman, I think, probably fits the mold the best for the Browns. The Browns don't need another big size uh, receiver on the outside and the boundary. No, 
They need a speed demon to work out of the slot and sort of stretch the defense a little bit. Make the defense respect what Cleveland can do over the top. And that's where Miko Hardman can be inserted. So if the Browns go free agency, uh, go the free agency route to find another wide receiver to complement Cooper and DPJ, I think they're going to go for a speed demon like Miko Hardman. We got more free agents to look at in just a second, but today's Cleveland Browns report is brought to you by Fetch. Fetch is a super easy to use and free app that lets you earn rewards on literally anything you buy. Scan any physical receipt or e-receipt and you will earn points for your purchases and the process only takes seconds. You don't have to worry about where the receipt is from or what's on it. So let me show you how simple it is. All you do is open up the Fetch app, press the orange camera button and snap a photo of your receipt. Then hit submit and you'll see that confetti pop showing you that you've earned more reward points. It's a simple process. You can also click the e-receipt function to get rewarded for your Amazon purchases or other online shopping by syncing your email account. You can then redeem those points for gift cards at Amazon, Starbucks, or any of the hundreds of other retailers and restaurants available. Fetch is available on iPhone and Android, and, and Android but you have to use our link, chatsports.com fetch, and enter promo code chat at sign up for 5,000 bonus points. And when you do, they're going to give you basically a free $5 gift card just to get started. It's a completely free app. And those 5,000 bonus points, they're not going to be around forever. So get started right now. Chatsports.com slash fetch. Enter promo code chat. That link is in the comments and the description of today's show. Moving on from wide receivers, safety free agent targets. Jesse Bates is the biggest name here. Uh, Jordan Poyer, a familiar face, of course. Jimmy Ward, Adrian Amos, and another familiar face, Jabril Peppers. But I want to focus in on two of these guys here, and that is Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates plays for a poverty franchise, that is the Cincinnati Bengals, that is shaking in their boots right now because they don't know how to handle giving out money to two really good players, Joe Burrow and Jesse Bates. They're definitely not going to lose Joe Burrow. So Jesse Bates and that poverty franchise as the Bengals that have to walk across a highway to their practice facility, they might let one of the best safeties in football walk. And could you imagine a Browns defense with Jesse Bates and an improving by weak safety partner in Grant Delpit? That's going to be freaking awesome. Now, if let's say the Browns decide we don't want to spend top dollar for Jesse Bates or if somehow by some stroke of you know luck, the Bengals win the lottery, and they decide to actually spend money for once. How about Jabril Peppers? One, he's not as old as you may think he is. I think he was just 27. Also, another thing for Jabril Peppers is, yep, he was uh, a part of the OBJ trade. And then when his last year at the Giants, he popped his Achilles. So a lot of people kind of just ruled him out. He's been really good for New England this year. So Jabril Peppers might be like a, you know, return coming home fan favorite move if Andrew Barry strikes out with Jesse Bates and plans two and three sort of fall through and Peppers is sitting there like you know what why don't we why don't we bring Pep back because he was great and if we could go back in time and undo the OBJ trade I bet they would click that button another big element for the safety department on this team is whether or not John Johnson is on this roster the Browns can save quite a bit of money if they were to move on from John Johnson. If they release him after June 1st, the dead cap hit in 2023 is just $3.7 million. Now, in 2024, it's $9.7, but there's $8.8 million of cap savings. So that's a spot where the Browns could open up some money, kind of like Austin Hooper last year, if you recall. I don't expect Johnson to be on this team next year, to be honest with you guys. I think they're probably going to move on, save some money, and at worst, they're going to roll with... Grant Delpit and DeAnthony Bell and a rookie from the draft as your safety room, along with some other cheap free agents. Let's look at linebackers now because the Browns definitely need to add some volume to this room. The only players returning to the roster next year that are currently on the roster is JOK, Tony Fields, and Jacob Phillips. They're going to want five, maybe even six linebackers. So we bring in Taki Taki and Anthony Walker. I sure hope Taki Taki comes back, although we're looking at two guys right there that are coming off really unfortunate knee injuries. Another, Some other names to keep an eye on for, Rashawn Evans. He's been really solid with the Falcons this year. Uh, Alex Singleton with Denver is kind of a 
cheaper, under-the-radar name to watch out for if Cleveland decides to kind of go light at that department. Drew Tranquil from the Chargers, he's going to be a free agent, and he's going to get a decent amount of attention. He's had a really good season, especially at getting after the quarterback. So with that, I would love to see some sort of reunion with Taki Taki. Anthony Walker, I want to come back, but also it's been two years, and both seasons have been sort of clouded with injuries, this season especially. But what do you think? Should the Browns re-sign Anthony Walker? Yes or no? I'm open to it for cheap, right? I don't want to see a lot of money go to Anthony Walker. And it's like, did we not learn our lesson? Two straight seasons with injuries. When he went down in that Steelers game, we can see where the defense really started to fall off. So that could be a pretty good point that Anthony Walker brings into the office of Andrew Barry. Don't look at my stats. Look at your team's stats after I, after I went down. You need me more than I need you. Now, let's talk about replacing Jadeveon Clowney. So, Jadeveon Clowney, I don't see him coming back. And with that, there are some other names out there. Draymond Jones from Denver, Yannick Ngakwe, uh, Zach Allen. I feel like anyone that's on the Cardinals defense that's not named Buda Baker, no one ever hears of because we just think of Cardinals, Kyler Murray, score a lot of points. Defense must be bad. Zach Allen, young, is having a really good year. Uh, Marcus Davenport for the Saints, he's always been... Uh, derailed by injuries, but if he can find a new home and stay healthy, that's an alternative option as well. And then sort of a under-the-radar type of route from the 49ers. Samson, oops, Samson Ibukam. Uh, Ib Ibukam, there it is. All right, so had to spit that one out. Ibukam is a really good rotational pass rusher, and let's say Cleveland decides we don't want to spend a lot of money we kind of like what we have in Alex Wright and maybe even Chase Winovich a little bit. So we'll just go for a rotational opposite defensive end and not find a true close to every down starter. The guy I like the most here on the bunch is Draymond Jones. Draymond Jones is pretty young, 25 years old. And look what he's done the last three seasons. He's been very consistent. Six and a half sacks, five and a half sacks, six and a half sacks. And he's been doing that on a Broncos defense that doesn't have a Miles Garrett opposite him, right? Bradley Chubb, Von Miller, they both took turns getting hurt or getting traded. Draymond Jones and Miles Garrett would form an elite pass rushing duo. And I know that Draymond Jones may not be a household name, but you know who else wasn't a household name before they left Denver? Shaq Barrett was with the Broncos before he led the NFL in sacks with the Bucks. So just because you haven't heard of this guy necessarily just yet, don't just rule him out because he's not a first overall pick like Clowney. Now, who do you want the Browns to sign? Let me know in the comments section. We just ran through 25 names I think Cleveland could go out and get. Curious who you'd like to see the Browns go out and sign.